Hello and welcome to the channel. So we've got a Fender Vibrolux, we just lift up the front there, you can see. Fender Vibrolux, I've just got the chassis, Vibrolux Reverb, this one. And uh, this is in for a few problems. Although well, I've not fired this up. One is the choke's supposed to be getting really hot. The customer sent a choke with this, but I'm not 100% sure it is the choke that's causing that. I've got a very loose output transformer. And uh, we're going to have a look under this doghouse and see what is under here. So the customer wants to keep this as original as possible. But of course that, that all depends on getting it running correctly. I've taken the output tubes out so they don't get broken because they're RCAs and while we're messing around with this and the rectifier tube I've also taken out and those tubes are here so we can have a look see there Rectifier tube is there, which is a 5U4GB. So we've got those. And uh, let's have a look under this doghouse and then we'll have a look at what other tubes are in this amp. Also, we've got, we're going to have to test all of these tubes as well. Oh, dearie me. So, no surprise there, the original caps. So let's just hone in on those excuse my voice I'm just getting over a cold well I've actually got over it now but it's just left my voice a little bit creaky so you can see we've got gumption coming out of him he looks very gumptious is that a word no it's not but we'll use it gumptious and then there's more gumption coming out of that one and that one doesn't look very healthy either so I think we can safely say that they're all over so let's have a look what we've got here with these caps. We've got 16 microfarad at 450. Same again, 16 at 450. And then we've got another 16 there. No doubt you in the States will know what these are before I've even looked at them. We don't see many Fender amps in this country. Never see a lot of them. Well, I don't anyway. And then we've got 16. And so they're all 16s. Uh, to probably replace those with 22s but they definitely need replacing don't if I've got any of those nope not uh, I don't know let's have a look see what we've got but anyway those uh, those are done this board has, has peeled up you can see quite quite badly here um, not much we can do about that though I don't think but yes, you can see that's very springy. Let me just bring the camera around there. We look in, you can see the board's quite, it's had some heat. No surprise given its age. So what we got in there, we've got a 12 AT7 Willow Vale. Never heard of that, but no doubt you have in the States. Willow Vale, what else have we got? RCA. Uh, there doesn't actually say what that is oh it does 12ax7 on the edge there oh, those pins are filthy on that there you go he's gone in didn't want to force him what we got here that is uh, not sure what that is can't really read that 7025 though so providing the test okay these she'll give them the lumberjack test to see if they're okay that looks like a telefunken to me but I'm guessing oh the dreaded gumption Ah, oh, in the tube socket, dearie me. 
So that's going to have to be cleaned out thoroughly. That one's got a bit of gumption in, moderate gumption. And that is a 7025 in there. So there we go. So I say the problem with this was the choke was getting hot. Transformers falling off. We can see that's no big deal. We just nip those up. Just check if there's any star washers on it. Let's have a look underneath. I've got gumption all over my hands now. Right, so let's have a look inside. Just at a glance. Sure, what's going on there? I'll have to check see if that's on the schematic. Like a capacitor there over the resistor. Hmm. So yeah, this is this is all original really in here been looking through don't see anything that's been changed on it at a glance I don't but so you can see the warping in the board down and up it's got a big hump here yeah everything does seem to be original on it this switch has never ever been connected up which is the ground switch which is Probably because it's for the UK market, I would guess. It's, it's, which is why they've not put that on. It looks like it's been somewhere where it's damp at, at some point. If, if we look at these cables, you can see they've, they're a bit... Uh, they've got mould on them or something. So yes, we, uh, we need some new caps in this, without a doubt. And uh, we need to find out why that choke is um, is overheating. Now I don't really want to plug this amp in if the choke's getting hot because that probably indicates a dead short. Let's have a look at the fuse in this because that's always a telltale sign. We have two amps and we should have two amps. So that's correct. So that's good. We've got that. No problems there. New problemo, and let's have a look at the voltage selector, which is that seems to be okay. Switches, power switches, standby switch seem to be in good order. So let's just check these pots on the front. See what we any of those are. Oh, yes, we've got a he's a bit of a scraper, yes. So we need to look at that that reverb pot. And yeah, so this amp hasn't been used for it, it's been stood for a long time, or it certainly appears that way. A lot of these pots are tight and scratchy, and that reverb pot's very stiff, so we need to look at that as well. <coughs> We'll test the tubes and uh, see what to uh, see what's going on with those. Right, I've got the old caps out and cleaned all the solder out of the eyelets, ready for the new caps to go in. And we've got some vichets to go in this, which have uh, been delivered. Here we go. You can see there, 22 microfarad at 450 volts, Victor Vichet will be going in there. We've got five of those. We've also got some uh, Vichy caps for the bypass capacitors on the preamp stages. And these are in here. There's 22 microfarad. So we're going to be putting those in as well. Right, we'll make a start. Right, I've got the caps in, 
got some new resistors in there and the next thing we need to do is have a look at this it's got some corrosion in it and you can see we don't want that all over the new capacitor so we're going to have to clean that out as well right so we've cleaned cleaned out the doghouse and we've just got uh, a piece of uh, sponge plastic sponge in there and that's just to hold the caps in because these caps aren't as deep as they're not as the previous ones so <coughs> the original which was this is just isn't big enough so we've just made that and that goes on there and it just pushes down tight on those and uh, we can get the lid back on and that's those done we're not far away from getting this amp fired up now right well i've got this thing up remember this transformer was loose as well so while we've got it we'll just finish this off while we've got it this way up and uh, we've got some star washers to go on these just to uh, help to keep them tight so that going in there screwdriver than that one. Yep, them up. And he's the one. I'll just take this one off and do the same, put the star washer on it. Right, so I've got this the other way up now. Now the customer wants me to keep this amp as original as possible. These are the bypass capacitors for the preamp stages along here and I might just hold off changing those I really should change them but I might just test them hold off changing them and just just pull them and test them just to see if they are you know if they are still good to Mr. Lacross there looking through now this board you can see has obviously had some it's been somewhere damp at some time I'm guessing but it's covered in wax and it's also bowed up there as we saw earlier so let's just have a look so these capacitors here test perfect there's absolutely nothing wrong with those at all the coupling caps test really well uh, on the preamp stages I've tested I've just whipped a couple of them out and they test exactly the same so unless we've got some serious issues here um, in, with any of these channels or the, the reverb or whatever I'm going to leave them because the explicit instructions from the customer is is to keep this amp as original as possible he's paying the bill so he's calling the shots now there were some of you out there saying oh you should change those you should change these but as i've said to you it's up to the customer at the end of the day this isn't my amp it's his amp and uh, it's his choice as to whether you know we if he'd have said just shotgun it i want all new caps in it then i would do that but that's not what he said to me so i've tested them they're, they're good so they're staying in <clears throat> now the other thing we need to check is the resistors I want to go across and see if we've got any of these more than 10% out. Tested the resistors on the bias circuit, they were fine. So we're looking pretty good with this amp to, to fire it up pretty soon. It's just these 470 ohm, um, 470 ohm resistors that I've got on here. And they really ought, ought to be changed but then again if the you know let, let's see what the test like and it's just the way they're positioned as well with these it's not just and that one measures 501 so that's drifted but it's drifted higher and that one is actually 504 so they they've gone they've gone up in the right direction really obviously we'd have put we'd put 1k in if we were changing those so they, they haven't they have not gone up much have they 30 ohms or so so they, they, they're pretty they may have even been that when they put them in <clears throat> so we're going to check the check all the resistors and then we're going to fire this amp up 
and on the current limiter and just see what's happening and then we'll eventually increase the bulbs on the current limiter and we'll keep an eye on that choke to see if it starts getting hot I've met as I say I've measured that choke and it all seems fine so we'll uh, we shall see right I've checked all the resistors and uh, there's nothing above 10% over so I think we'll leave those in as we found them so as all, all is looking good with this amp now we just need to get it fired up and just check uh, just check this so-called choke issue right we've got the amp on the test bench just thought I'd check before we start plugging in we check this plug it, it's, it's okay the, the uh, terminals are a bit loose you usually find that 13 amp fuse though he's not a lumberjack and he's not okay as this is not an electric kettle so yes and i know it's got a fuse on the chassis but it shouldn't be there really should it we don't want that in there right we've changed that fuse and i've put that 13 amp to my ever-growing collection which is labeled the drawer is labeled chocolate fire guard right we'll fire it up and see what we've got so we've got 40 watt bulb on the current limiter at the minute there we go and that's glowing quite <laughs> and that's bulb is glowing quite brightly at the moment so we'll wait and see what happens we've got 56 volts and climbing remember we're going to bring these capacitors up steady so we don't want to just shock them with full voltage might be able to see that on, on there if you look on here so we're just going up we're up to 75 volts now on there we've got the meter there look you can see the, the rectifier tubes just beginning to conduct you can see the plate voltage is going up there bulb is dimming slightly but we're going to let that climb 81 volts now it's climbed up to drawing 120 milliamps so that's leveled out at 82 volts now 150 and now the you can see the plate voltage is beginning to drop it peaked at 153 and that's because the tubes are conducting now so that's pretty much stabilized that all seems to be looking good so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put another 40 watt bulb in so we're going to go up to 80 watts so now I've got two bulbs so they now are quite dim and now you can see that plate voltage is, sh is shooting up there and the bulbs are quite quite dim We're actually getting a bit of life on the scope as well now I've got 120 volts running on this amp now so still not a lot remember with 240 here we've got 176 volts there so I'm now going to remove I'm just going to go up a bit more now so I'm going to remove one of the 40s just put a 60 in so we're just going to creep up so we're not straining these caps there you go and you can see that voltage is creeping up again and we're we now up to that's not really made a great it's made some difference on the scope it needs to be glowing quite a bit just check that choke it's not getting warm 270 milliamps now we're we've got going on there 
we've got 208 plate volts 134 now so what, what we're going to do now I'm going to stick a 100 watt bulb in And a 40 watt bulb in. So now I've got 140, and you can see the voltage is going up now. So we've got signal, you can see the plate volts dropping there because I've cranked the amp. So we drop that down, you can see that plate voltage increasing now, and the current's down to 290 milliamps. Choke is cool still. Just to push the bulbs up a bit more. So we've got 200 watts of bulbs now. Two hundred and sixty-three. We now got one hundred and seventy-five volts, so we're not a million miles off. So let's just check that choke. Seems cool, cold. So no issues with that choke. Let's just let's just flick off the current limiter now. So the current limiter's off. So we've, I've just bridged out the, the vibrato uh, RCA jack there and you can see if I just, uh, we'll just take up the intensity. So that all seems to be working okay. have a look what we've got then so we've doesn't look bad Right, we better check the bias I think on this now. Let's just try the normal channel. Doesn't appear to be running particularly hot or anything. So that's the normal channel. That's the base control, treble. Ooh. And that is flat out, but that's that bright switch again. Notice that on both of them. Well, it's like there's some oscillation there, something going on when they're clicked in, but they're both the same, so I do new. So the choke's a little bit warm, but I just think that's the heat off the output tube because it's obviously a smack in front of it. Right. So I was going to check the bias, but first I thought I'd check a few coupling caps on this amp 
and we've got leakage but we've not got leakage on the caps and i don't think we've got leakage on the board and it doesn't matter where i actually put this on here i've got two point i've got four volts there this is 2.6 volts 3.7 there leakage there 2.3 3 volts there, 3 volts there, 2.6 there, so this board is leaking all over, it is like a colander. <clears throat> right, so we've got this amp fired up, and this amp has some issues as we've seen. First of all, let's have a look at the caps that came out, you can see, if you look at those, those are that one's done that one's the same punctured with gumption coming out that one's looking very sick as well that one's very sick with immense gumption coming out of him and that one's got a pimple of gumption so they're done so that's what we've changed so if we look at this part here you can see we've got a swishing sound going on, scratchiness, and that's because there's DC leaking onto this pot. And if we just go in here, you can see we've got a quarter of a volt there. We had as much as half a volt yesterday. So it's this maybe maybe this board is drying out a little bit. But now if we if I put the meter on the board can see this half a volt there on the board so put the meter here 1.3 volts leaking onto the board 1.9 volts 1.8 well that's fluctuating 1.3 volts leaking on the board 1.1 we go up here 0.5 2 volts 0.7, 1.4, even on the edge of the board there, 3 volts, 2 volts, whatever. So you can see this board all over is conductive, and that's what's causing the problems. Now most people would think, oh well that's the coupling cap that's, that's causing that, but there's no point changing the coupling cap only to find that this will still be the same because that voltage is just leaking across this board and it's just leaking into these onto these eyelets where the, the, the pots the volume pots connected so well it's actually the treble I think it goes through first into the treble pot I think I'm not sure because not checked on the schematic so big problems with this amp now clean some people clean these boards and as you can see looking at that board you just look over that would be a very lengthy process and for me to do that for the customer is going to be a costly process you know you're talking about going across this with alcohol and you know cotton buds whatever you've got clean air every part of this and you've got to clean it totally thoroughly because if you don't there'll still be leakage on there it's also coated in wax as well so all that would have to be fetched off having said that the amp runs okay you know you've got there's a bit of swishiness in that part there if we look at the, this channel's got a tiny bit but nothing that would cause a riot But there's no way of getting rid of that without you know even you know even with cleaning this board you've got so much work and you still you know still might never get this board right it's warped really badly there you can see you can see that we, we looked at that earlier it's, you know it's it's had some serious damp in it this amp 
and you know are these amps just got to an age now where these boards are just you know finished they've just reached the end of the life some people will argue differently if this isn't my amp and I'm only doing what the customer is asking me to do which is to try and keep this amp as original as possible and that's what we've done we had to change those caps there's no question the other caps seem fine and I'm guessing all these coupling caps are fine and that leakage is onto this part is is the board will the tubes last as long probably not but they've lasted long enough in here haven't they so you know this amps I had um, this amp's probably been like that for years that you know I've tested the tubes they all test good yeah we've got a bit of DC on the grids we shouldn't have any the output tubes are, are biased lower than they should be so although we may have some DC leaking onto the grids there it's it's not enough to you know to get the tubes hot so this amp you know is is running pretty well Apart from you know we've just got a bit of noise on there I've had a guitar in it briefly in fact we're gonna have a listen but I've had a guitar in it briefly and and it, everything seemed okay on it to me that the, the way that that I would go with this you're either going to leave it as original as it is or you're just going to take the board out put a new board in if it was mine that's what I'd do but it's not mine so it's uh, the customer wants it it's his amp and he has a right to have it I wants it so it's a case of we'll run this up now we'll have a listen and then we'll we'll get back to the customer and see what he wants to do from here but to be honest you know if he wants to keep this original I'd just use it as it is it, it, it it'll work fine yeah, the t you know the the preamp tubes might not last quite as long, but it depends how much he's using it. You know, unless he's using it every day for eight hours a day, I don't see it being a huge deal. Right, so let's have a listen. So I've bridged out the vibrato foot switch socket, so we can use the well the. And you can hear it's a bit noisy, the vibrato. So, you know, maybe the caps are getting a bit tired on that. Not bad.
and the tone to it well sounds okay as I say we've got a few issues we've got a really conductive board which is obviously leading to these scratchy parts we've got mismatched tubes uh, but again you know it is part of that down to the board it, part of it will probably be just general wear and tear on these tubes um, choke was supposed to be getting hot on this amp it's not really it's lukewarm now if, if it was getting hot before we didn't plug it in because of the state of those ca caps so maybe one of those caps was dead short or partially short or whatever I don't know so yeah that seems to be about it for this one so whether there'll be a part two on this one I don't know but that's going to do it for now so thanks for watching and uh, you all take care and I'll see you all in another video bye bye for now